Hello there, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Chit Chat, and on this video, we're talking about a method you can utilize inside of Adobe Animate called the swap technique. Now this technique will help you out when it comes to handling multiple variations of an object or a part of a character. A good example of this, hands. Now this technique can be used for anything you can imagine, facial expressions, props, different effects, but for this tutorial, we're gonna be using hands as a point of reference so we can do a deep dive into these methods and how they work. But as always, I think we need to get a little animated ourselves so we can talk about this a little bit more. The swap technique allows you to switch or replace one object for another, which is how I'm changing my hand gestures right now, from an open palm gesture, to pointing, to a thumbs up, to even the occasional jazz hands. The really cool part about this is that it's associated with the keyframe, making swaps during animation much easier than say, having to make a whole new layer on your timeline for each new object. We'll cover two ways to swap objects inside of Adobe Animate. One utilizes the symbol swap, and the other one utilizes the frame picker, so I like to call it the frame swap. To start, let's cover the symbol swap method. So for this first method to the swap technique, we're gonna need to convert each of these into their own symbol. You can do that by selecting the object, right clicking, and saying convert to symbol. You can also press F8 as a quick key. You'll see that it's asking for a name, and the naming convention is actually pretty important, so when you create a new symbol, it's automatically saved inside of this project's library. So you wanna name it in a way that makes sense and is easier to find later. So for this example, I'm just going to say hand at rest. Now that each of these hands have been converted into symbols, we can check to see if they're in the library. We can do that by pressing either Control L if you're on a PC or Command L if you're on a Mac. Once you do that, you'll see the library tab has opened up on the right side of my screen. Each of the hands that I've created are now inside the library. And because of that, we no longer need all of these hands on our screen. So I can go ahead and delete all the hands that I don't currently need. So I'm gonna need to place a couple of keyframes on our timeline. I'm gonna do one at five and 10. So I'm gonna go to five and I'm gonna press the quick key for keyframe, which is F6. You can also just right click and say insert keyframe. Now with the keyframe on five and 10, I'm gonna swap the hand to a different hand. So I'm gonna go to frame five on my timeline, then I'm gonna select the object, and then with the object selected, the object panel should be up on your screen. If you look right next to the instance name, you'll see a button that has two arrows on it. This is the swap symbol button. If we select that, a new screen will pop up very similar to your library. Now you can see all of different hands that we've already created. So I can go ahead and change it from its at rest pose to pointing and select OK. Because I did that, it now has swapped that hand immediately on frame five. If I scroll on the timeline, you'll see that it actually does change with the keyframe. And then on 10, I'm gonna select it again I'll hit the swap button and let's go ahead and change it to the thumbs up. So that is one way you can utilize this swap technique, but I know what you're saying. You probably wanna see this actually applied to an animated rig. So let's go ahead and do that next. So as you can see, I've pulled up my character avatar and I'm going to be doing a little bit of animation to that back arm. Now, I also covered this in my previous video on rigging, but the hand is connected to the forearm, which is connected to the upper arm, and I'm doing that by the method of parenting. So now what I'm gonna do is a real quick and simple animation of the arm rising and the hand going into a thumbs up gesture. So now that I've got that, I'm gonna place a keyframe for the three objects I actually wanna have animation for. Right click, insert keyframe. So now what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on the character. I'm gonna rotate the arm. Again, I'm gonna press Q to bring up the quick transform tool. Gonna rotate it just a little bit. Then I'm gonna take the forearm and rotate that just a little bit. And then I'm going to change this. I'm gonna swap this hand to be the thumbs up version. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the swap symbol button. And let's go ahead and select hand thumbs up. 
So you can see that the orientation of this is a little off because I imported these example files into this rig. So they're a little bit different than the actual rigs version. So what I need to do is change this hand, but I don't necessarily want to do it on this outside timeline. I want to actually go inside of the object and change it there. The reason I want to do that is because if I change it inside of the graphic, it will change it for all future versions of this thumbs up gesture. So I won't have to change it again. In order to do that, we need to double click on the object, which brings us into an embedded timeline. So what I want to do is just transform. In this case, we're going to flip vertical and then we're going to rotate it so that it's in the right place. And then we're going to move it so that it's roughly in the same spot as the previous hand. You can then jump out of the timeline in two different ways, either double click on the empty space where the object isn't present, or you can select this arrow next to the scene underneath the animation timeline. So once I do that, now I'm back on the main timeline. If I scroll, I can see that the keyframes are set and the hand does swap. So what we want to do next is apply a tween. So what we're going to do is select the in-between area. We're going to right click and say, create classic tween. With that, the computer is now doing the animation, the in-betweens for us. And as you can see, it's moving and the hand actually does swap. Let me go ahead and zoom out and play it for you one more time. And there you have it, a simple method for swapping out different versions of your character or parts of a character or even objects. But like I said, there is another method to doing the swap technique, and that is utilizing the frame picker and the object panel. Let's cover that next. And for this method, we don't need to convert each of these into their own symbol. We only need to convert one. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this first hand. I'm gonna right click and say, convert to symbol. Now the naming convention of course is important, but it's not as important in this version because I only need to create one hand symbol. So I'll simply just call this one hand. And now what I need to do is take each of these additional hands and put them in the embedded timeline of this graphic. I know that's a little confusing, but it will make a lot more sense once we start doing it, I promise. In order to do that, we need to double click on the object, which brings us into an embedded timeline. You can tell you are because if you look right underneath the animation panel, it'll say scene one and then the name of the symbol you're inside of. So just keep that in mind. It's very important to make sure that you're on the right timeline. So what I'm going to do next is paste back in the hands that we cut from the original timeline. And now what I need to do is put each of these hands on their own keyframes. And not only that, they need to be overlapping the original hand and be relatively in the same position. So I'm going to go ahead and start by removing all these hands again. I'm going to create a new keyframe. I'm going to paste the hands back in, but I only need just this one. I'm going to move it over so that it's relatively in the same area as the previous hand. And then I'm going to remove that hand that's underneath. Now you can see it as I'm moving the timeline, it's swapping the hands. So I need to do this for every single instance I want inside of this embedded timeline. So now that we're back on the main timeline, what we're going to do is add some frames to this scene. I'm going to go ahead and add frames up until 10 because we're going to do the same thing as last time. We'll add a keyframe on five and a keyframe on 10. But first, I want to show you what happens when we add some frames. I can do that by yet again, pressing F5. So as you can see, once I added frames to this, the hand is just swapping like crazy. The reason because is that a symbol automatically says that if there are any frames on the main timeline, it'll play all of the interior timelines frames along with it. So there's a way of changing this. And this part is really important. So we'll scroll over to the first keyframe. Then we're going to select the object. Over in the looping menu, you'll see a couple of different options. The one that it's currently set to is called play graphic in loop, which means that once it reaches the end of that interior timeline, it's just going to go right back again at the beginning and play it all over again. What we want to change it to is this option, play single frame for the graphic. This means that it's only going to play the designated frame of our choosing, which is what we want. So now that that's selected, if I scrub the timeline, it's not changing. So we know it worked. So what we're going to want to do is create a new keyframe on five, which again, you can do as a quick key with F6 and a new keyframe on 10. So with our marker over frame five, I'm going to select the hand 
And now to do this particular version of the swap technique, I'm going to go over to the frame picker. Once I select that, I get a new window that pops up. What it's showing us is each keyframes object, which is really handy. It's not showing us anything in the library, just what's inside of this particular graphic. So now what I'm gonna do is select the pointing finger, which in this case is on keyframe three. As you can see, it immediately swapped to that frame. I then can scroll to 10, and with this window still up, all I need to do is select the object, and then I can press the thumbs up version, which is frame six. So these frame numbers are also important because if you kind of get familiar with your character rig, you don't even really need to have this window up because each of these are referring to a frame number. So I know that frame one is the original resting hand, frame three is the pointing hand, and frame six is the thumbs up. So if I wanted to, I could simply go over here in the looping panel where it says first. Right now it's set to six, which is the frame number of the thumbs up. If I wanted to change it back to the resting pose, I can just type in one, and as you can see, it immediately changed back to the resting hand. So now as we play this, you'll see very similarly, it's swapping the hands out for the different versions. Now let's see this in action on an actual character rig. So as you can see, I have my avatar rig once more, and we're gonna do the exact same animation from the previous method. We're gonna have the arm raise and go into a thumbs up position. So I've already got my frames to 15 set, so I'm gonna add some keyframes. F6, now we're gonna zoom in, and let's go ahead and grab that arm, move it up a little bit, move the forearm up a little bit, reposition it, and now we're going to select the hand, and let's go to the frame picker, and select the thumbs up. Reposition it so it makes sense. And now, just like before, we can see that the keyframe does indeed swap it, so now we're gonna apply a motion tween. Create classic tween. I'm also gonna add an ease, just like last time. So now, we play it, just like before. I'll go ahead and zoom out and play it one more time. And with that, we have covered two different methods for swapping out different variations or objects for one another and associating them with keyframes. Now, both of these options are completely viable. It honestly just comes down to either your animation, your organizational skills, or just your personal preference. No matter which method you end up using, I hope you find these techniques helpful and can maybe use them in your future animation projects. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. And as always, I will chat with you on the next video.